Hey guys, Emma here, and welcome back to my channel, Recipe for Success, where we like to talk about all things project management, product management, especially in the space of technology. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you guys the lowdown on all things agendas. That's right, I'm gonna be talking at length all of my pro tips, and I'm also gonna be critiquing my past self in terms of things that I used to do with my agenda writing and things that I do differently now that I'm a more experienced project manager. This is part of my series on how to up-level yourself as a project manager. If that interests you, please give this video a big thumbs up. We'll get started shortly. Why have an agenda at all? This is where we really need to start, guys. Agendas are fundamental to making sure that you can get the most value and drive a meeting effectively. You might work in an organization where agendas aren't held in high esteem. I've certainly worked with myriad project managers in the past who do not take the time to put together agendas. Now, this could be that maybe they perceive agendas as a lofty goal, something that's a nice to have, but not a necessity. It could also be that maybe they don't appreciate the important and powerful lever that a good agenda brings to meeting effectiveness. That's right, if you wanna think about your efficacy as a project manager, I'm suggesting that having an agenda, having a well thought out and well put together agenda is going to improve your efficacy as a project manager. It's gonna help you drive your meeting better. And furthermore, if you have the right things in the agenda, it should make your meeting go a lot smoother. So this is why I think taking the time to go ahead and make sure that your meetings have agendas before you actually hold the meeting is very important. Now, if you're finding that you're pressed for time and that's one of the contributing factors to why you're not able to actually go ahead and put together agendas for your meetings, I think there are two options here for you. I went ahead and put together a video already on five calendar holds that I think every project manager should have on their recurring calendar. And two of them were related to agenda and scheduling meetings. One was for scheduling meetings, the other one was for putting together agendas for those meetings or reviewing agendas for upcoming important meetings. So if you do that, give yourself some of that breathing space in order to put together well thought out and meaningful agendas. I think that's really going to help improve your efficacy as a project manager and up level yourself from a basic project manager. You know, that person who's showing up, leading the meeting, they know what they wanna talk about, but they haven't sent that information out to their stakeholders or other attendees in advance to a more experienced, more effective PM. The PM who can showcase before the meeting begins, here's everything that needs to get done in this meeting, here's why we're having this meeting, and here's who I need to be at this meeting. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys an example of what a basic agenda looked like that I used to send out. Now I'm not advocating necessarily for this type of agenda, I'm just sharing with you guys things that I used to do as a beginner project manager. And I'm gonna use this as a reference point and frankly pick on myself a little bit to showcase to you guys things that I wish I had done differently. So if we look at this agenda, there are a few things here that I think need to be improved upon and certainly that I think could have gone better. First and foremost, I'll say good on me for actually sending out an agenda. At the end of the day, if a basic agenda is all you can get together, really in this case it's just a list of topics that I wanna go ahead and talk about for this meeting, you know what, something is better than nothing. If this is where your starting point is, I wanna say good on you for taking the time to go ahead and put something together, because again, something is better than nothing. And we're gonna talk at length about ways that maybe you can improve and mechanisms you can use to make putting together more effective agendas easier. Even having this basic level of agenda showcases the fact that you are, before your meeting, taking the time to think through what it is you need to talk about, what it is you need to actually accomplish in that meeting. And that's sort of a level one, if you will, that basic principle of putting together an agenda. And I, again, I really think the benefit is in the forethought that you're showcasing as a project manager. So good for you for even if this is all you're putting together, good job. Now, there are a lot of things that I think are missing from this agenda and a lot of things that I think could be improved on. First and foremost, I noticed that for a lot of the agendas that I used to put together, and one of the things that's missing here is a clearly stated goal or objective for the meeting. Now, this could be something that maybe some other experienced PMs might feel like is fluff, that people put together goals and objectives um, and then have reoccurring meetings and then never changes and it never seems to really add value. But what I will say is, especially when I'm having meetings where there is a particular outcome that we're trying to drive towards, maybe we're having a meeting to talk about testing timelines, 
and the objective or goal of that meeting is to finalize what the testing timelines are going to be, clearly stating that at the top of the meeting agenda is going to add so much more value because beforehand it's going to let my stakeholders know what it is I'm looking to get out of that meeting. And then during the meeting, if I'm displaying my notes while I'm taking them and I'm taking them based on the agenda, it's something that everyone has access to, everyone can read, everyone can draw themselves back to the point, aka the objective of the meeting. So in case things start to swirl or maybe we run off track in the meeting, being able to point back to the goal or objective of the meeting as the project manager will help you pull in those reins a little bit, get everyone back on track and take control of that meeting. So again, the first thing that I would say to improve sort of that basic level agenda setting is to go ahead and add a goal, purpose or objective statement to the agenda itself. The second thing that I would add to this agenda is a list of stakeholders. A few things on stakeholders, guys. First and foremost, I know people are going to come at me and say, hey, Emma, that's not really important because in Outlook, you can go ahead and see stakeholders anyway. This isn't necessarily always true. I've worked for organizations in the past where they actually hide the list of stakeholders or if someone forwards your meeting to another stakeholder, they won't actually be able to see who was on the original invite. What happens as a result of that? It causes tons of swirl, guys. What ends up happening, or at least what's happened to me personally, is your stakeholders then start bouncing these e meeting invites back and forth amongst themselves, forward to other people, people who you might have already had on the original invite because they can't actually see who was on that invite. So again, in order for you as the project manager to sort of maintain control of your meeting, to make sure that you know who is getting your in meeting invites, I would recommend within the agenda itself, you actually list out the stakeholders themselves. And this also should be broken down even further, guys, into required attendees and optional. So this is one thing that as a junior PM, I never did. I sort of saw it as why would I ever include optional attendees or optional stakeholders in my meetings? Everyone who I'm putting on the invite is required to be there. But the reality is you might have a situation in which there might be a director of a department who is choosing to outsource the decision making to one of their employees, but maybe they still wanna be on the invite in case their schedule opens up, they would be happy to join. This could be a case in point where it is important to have the director as optional, but the employee who's actually making the decision decisions as required. The other thing that's really great about identifying required stakeholders in an agenda in advance of the meeting is that if those stakeholders aren't able to make it, you can go ahead and redirect and reschedule the meeting as needed. Basically creates a priority list of required attendees that you then as the project manager can shift the scheduling around. So if a non-required attendee says, hey, I can't make it at this time, can you please move this? It gives you the leverage and opportunity as the project manager to say, hey, thanks for letting me know. Either yes, we can do that, or I'm so sorry, but this is the only time that could work for our required attendees and required stakeholders, and therefore we're gonna have to keep this time. But of course I can offer you X, Y, and Z, you'll be, you'll be included on the notes, we can record it for you, et cetera. So this is one of the reasons why I think including who's required as an attendee versus who is not required is very important in that agenda. It ensures that everyone knows who the right people are that, that need to be on the meeting. It also ensures that if there's anyone left out, people can let you as the project manager know before the meeting gets started. This means ultimately that the likelihood of you getting to the meeting and finding out that a required stakeholder is unavailable is drastically reduced, which means that you're shuffling your schedule less and overall, again, more seamlessly managing your projects. Now let's talk about the topics that I included in my agenda and ways that I could have made the agenda more inviting and more helpful for my stakeholders who are required to attend my meeting. If you look at my original agenda here basically I just had topics that I wanted to talk about in bullets but I didn't really truly include information about those topics information that might be pertinent to making a decision or to anything that I needed around those topics for my stakeholders so there might be a question from my stakeholder perspective are these just updates that they're getting in which case presumably could the meeting actually just be an email or are there actual decision points that need to be made and if there are decision points what are the options what's the data things like that next thing that I want to talk about here and recommend and something that I've implemented for myself is while I might still list out the topics and the order of topics that I want to talk about in my agendas, I will start to actually add and beef up the information underneath each of those topics for things that I think are pertinent. So anything that I'm going to include in notes, I go ahead and include in the agenda anyway. 
Here's why. When I'm actually then taking my notes in the meeting, it's not something that I have to copy and paste over. It's already in the agenda, so it's already there in the notes when I go to send it out. I'm talking about things like if I have a topic here that's gonna be listed as milestones, and I wanna just review the milestones with my key stakeholders, I should go ahead and take the time to copy and paste the milestones that I think are upcoming and pertinent within the agenda. So when I go to have that topic within the meeting, it can be a split one minute, two minute topic where I say to the stakeholders, these are the upcoming milestones. You've already seen these in the agenda. Are there any questions or any concerns about these? Helps me as the project manager better drive the conversation. And also from a meeting standpoint, it's a more effective use of our meeting time. Here's where it gets a little bit trickier, guys. So if there is something that needs a decision to be made by my stakeholders. Again, when I was a junior PM, I would just have that topic and then maybe I would list something like decision needed. I wouldn't actually ever really flesh out the decision before we got into the meeting with the intent and with the mindset that we would just discuss it in the meeting. There was no need to actually provide enough substantial information ahead of time. Now, as a more senior PM, I actually think this is a mistake and this is something that I actively try to avoid. Instead, what I do for these meetings and for these decision points and types of bullets is I flesh out the actual options, providing maybe the most salient three or four options for those decision points. I also then like to list out the pros and cons. Again, doesn't have to be a full length novel, but at least a sentence or two. And then last but not least, I include any data that I think is helpful for my stakeholders in making that decision. So for example, if we were going to be making a decision using my example previously about testing timelines, and maybe there were three options for testing timelines, I would list out what the three options were, and then I would write a pros and cons bullet for each. So maybe one pro to one is we would start earlier and therefore have more time for testing if testing fails. Maybe the con is that um, we might not be ready with our build configuration in time for that date. Maybe the second option, the pro, is that we would have all of our build ready by the time we start, but the con is maybe it falls over the holidays and there are a lot of outages. So that's the kind of forethought and thinking that I would include in my agenda. That way my stakeholders have an opportunity and chance to read about that in advance of the meeting. And then during the meeting as the project manager, I'm not over here trying to collect my thoughts and think through the arguments, the pros and cons to each of the options to help guide my stakeholders instead I can just say to them and reference these really clear notes within my agenda to say these are the options uh, these are you know potentially the best three or four options these are some pros and cons for each let's go ahead and have a conversation let's go ahead and actually have a discussion about how you guys are feeling about some of these options is there something different that we need to do or can we agree on one of these options so there you guys have it those are three key changes that I've made to my agendas now as a more experienced PM I really do think incorporating those subtle changes to my agendas has made a huge difference in how I'm able to effectively run my meetings certainly how my stakeholders view me as a project manager and the efficacy and also just what I bring to the the table. I think a lot of my stakeholders feel like when they join my meetings, they know what to expect. They're able to make quick and timely decisions that don't hold up our projects. And I think they like knowing that they're always going to get this baseline of information from me. If agendas aren't something that you do today or are part of your PMO culture, I strongly encourage you to go ahead and give it a try. I will say it can be a bit challenging because it does take some time to put together these agendas, but using that time to have adequate forethought in your meeting and what you want to get out of those meetings, I think does pay dividends as a project manager in terms of having more smoothly run projects in the long run. If you are an experienced project manager, I would love to hear your thoughts on what you include in your agendas. Maybe something that I don't include, but something that you like to include, please share below. That's the whole point of this community that we can, as project managers, talk a lot about our own experiences and share our thoughts. That's everything I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive on all things that agendas, how to put together agendas, how to make your agendas even better, more useful for your meetings. If you guys have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments down below. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.